unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Galatians chapter 6 and verses 7 to 8. We're going to read verse 7 and 8. If you're there, you say, Amen. Now, the Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Are you following me? And the next line says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall all the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall all of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Somebody shout hallelujah. Paul says, be not deceived. For a man reaps what he sows. And then he gets into explaining particularly what he means in this, in this particular segment. And he says, uh-uh. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he says, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Hallelujah. And I've realized that many Christians do not know what it means to sow of the spirit. To sow to the spirit. What does it mean to sow to the spirit? What does it mean to give to the spirit? What does it mean to sow to the flesh? Some people confuse the acts of the flesh as sowing to the flesh. Uh-uh. Those are just results of sowing to the flesh. They are not sowing to the flesh. Those, that's the aftermath of sowing to the flesh. Who is following what I'm saying? The things you see us do, you do spiritually. Those are, so, when we call them, those are acts or results of a man who has sowed to the spirit. That is not sowing to the spirit. Those are results of a man who has sowed to the spirit. When you cast out a devil out of a man, that is a man who, and, and the devil leaves. That is a man who has, that's the action, that's the result of a man who has sowed to the spirit. Who is following what I'm saying? When you lay hands on a sick man and a sick man is healed, that is the action of a man who has sowed to the spirit. But that is not sowing to the spirit. Are you hearing me? When you get somebody and then you do something of the flesh or you steal or you lie, that's the act representing a man who has sowed to the flesh. But that's not the sowing to the flesh. It's like blessing. When I say you're blessed, when you drive a nice car and live in his house, God probably has blessed you financially. That's the result of a man blessed by God. But that is not the blessing. Because you had it even before you had the house. As a seed in your spirit. Who is following what I'm saying? Now he said if you sow to the flesh. You will all the flesh reap. Corruption. And he says but if you sow by the spirit. You will or shall. All the spirit reap life everlasting. Reap zoe everlasting. A continuous experience of the life of God in you. And evident in your life. That he says you will reap. It is a reaping. When people start to see the life of God in us. That's a reaping. Who is understand? Who is understanding? Sorry. That's, that's a reaping. When, when people see the results of the power of God. When people see the results of the operation of the Holy Spirit on you. Those are the results of a man who has sowed to the Spirit. So I need to teach you what it means to sow to the Spirit. So you have the results of reaping of life. Everlasting. Because you have learned how to sow of the Spirit. Hallelujah. This is what sowing to the flesh is. Sowing to the flesh is being conscious of your fleshly nature and hence responding to your flesh and its dictates. 
You understand? That is sowing to the flesh. It begins by your consciousness to the flesh. When you are conscious to the flesh, you have started to sow to the flesh. And consequently, he says, you shall also reap corruption. When you are spirit conscious, when you live a life spirit conscious, when situations and circumstances happen around you and you maintain a mind of a spirit conscious person, you become conscious of who you are by the spirit. You become conscious of what the spirit is saying. You become conscious of what the spirit is doing. You become conscious of the mind of God. That is a man sowing to the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'll give you an example. If a, if a snake bites you, what's the first response? You understand? The Bible tells us of a man called Paul. He was starting a fire. And the Bible says that out of that a viper came. And what did it do? It smites his hand. And, and the Bible says he shook up the beast into a fire and felt no harm. Are you hearing me? He said he felt no harm. He just shook it off. And the next verse says, I, I, I want to go to that place where it says, it, when, when you go follow the same story, you realize that when he shakes it off, everybody, the carnal men, they start looking at him waiting to see. They start examining him. He says, I came out of, uh, of uh, yeah, how be they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. These, these were people who were around a man who was of the spirit, who knew how to sow to the spirit. A viper hits his hand. Are you hearing me? Shakes it off. And he didn't look at it. He didn't examine how bad it is. He doesn't look, oh, he doesn't, no, no, no. He just continues his business. And the scriptures tell you, they are the people who are looking at him to see whether he will swell. Paul is not conscious about swelling. He felt no harm. Hallelujah. And then after a while when they wait, and then they see nothing, they say, ah, this man must be a God. This man must be a God. That's a man who was so conscious of the life of God that is in him. That even when a viper holds onto his wrist and smites him, he's not conscious that he can die. Slap somebody and tell them, be conscious of the spirit. Paul understood what it means to carry the life of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, I think, Paul speaks of himself as the apostle of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ. He, he even claims his office and, 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 and ability to reach as many as he could because of the promise of the Zoe, which is in Christ Jesus. He, he knows that he's a man of God. Why? Because of the promise of the life, which is in Christ. In him was life, the Bible says. That is the life that is the light. That is the light that shines in darkness. We know that he that has the son has life. But how conscious are we of this life in God? Somebody shout hallelujah. Put your hand on your chest and say, I have the life which is of God. Say it again and say, I have the life which is of God. Say one more time and say, I have the life which is of God. Shout hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? A viper hangs on this man and he's not conscious that it will harm him. If Paul became conscious of that viper, he would have sown to the flesh. And if he had sowed to the flesh, he would reap all of the flesh corruption. He would reap all of the flesh death. He would reap all of the flesh affliction. He would reap all of the flesh disease. He would reap all of the flesh swelling. And eventually he would fall dead, even if he was a man of God. Because he was conscious of his spiritual nature. He was conscious of the life that he has in God. There was nothing the viper could do to him. He said that snakes shall hit you. Scorpions shall touch you. He says, but those things shall by no means harm you. That means that there is no means. Not, oh, think about it. There is somebody who gets beaten and he runs fast to a black stone. Are you hearing me? But you can get so conscious spiritually you can learn so much to sow to the spirit you see i used to ask myself so much for so long why is it that 
we are, we, without even intention, find ourselves so into the flesh than we do to the spirit. And the Lord gave me a very interesting answer. He told me, look, it is because for so long on your altars, men have put lies, deception, and false humilities on the altar. And because they've put that, because you're not established in truth, you cannot produce the results of a man of truth. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Why is it that in my mind I'm not free from the poison of that viper? Who is understanding what I'm saying? But it is because we have not told truth for some time. There's many things that appear like they are truth, but they are not truth. They are the deceptions. They're the ideas of men that are like now the doctrine of Christ. But yet they are not truth. I'll give you an example. You've been around ministers. And I think in my life again, I used to be conscious so in the flesh that I, I used to carry a false humility before God. And, 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 and this false humility, I got because I had another man saying it. And physically, the man looked humble when he said it. I know that if I reason now back in retrospect, I know what he was intending to do. He was a man whom God had worked through mightily and he did not want men to forget that this power is of God. Are you hearing me? But in trying not men not to forget that this power is of God and work within him, he went ahead and made a statement. I had it from him. I learned it and I started to use it also. And over time, one time the spirit rebuked me openly and he said, never say that again. Do you want to know the statement? I always used to say, I'm just a vessel. I'm just a channel. I'm just a vessel that God is using. I'm just a channel that God is using. That is reasonably true, but not revelationally true. I'll explain that. He says... We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have earthen vessels, but we are not the vessels. Who understands what I'm saying? We have vessels. I have a body, but I'm not my body. I'm a spirit. The Lord told me, you cannot just be a channel when I've put the Holy Spirit in you. If you were just a channel, I'll just use the spirit through you. But the spirit dwells in you. Oh, the Holy Ghost dwells in you. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you. You're not just a vessel he uses to heal the sick. No, he dwells in there. Who understands what I'm saying? He dwells in there. So you're more than just a vessel. Ah, ah. You're more than just a vessel. You are more than just a vessel. A vessel cannot have a mind. You understand? But he has given you the mind. The only difference is he has said very clearly that we hold the very thoughts and feelings. We hold the very thoughts. Who has known the mind? We have known it. Who is understanding what I'm saying? A vessel is like, for example, if I put water in a cup right? And I drink it or a glass of water. That is a vessel. It doesn't have a mind. It does not relate with me beyond its use. You're more precious. God would not have died for a vessel. The fact that he shed his blood for you, you're more than a vessel. Tell your neighbor, more than a vessel. I'm a child of God. I'm a son of the most high. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have his life within me. God can't choose that his life dwells in you permanently. And you just stay a vessel. Who is understanding what I'm saying? And because we had that false humility. And we're conscious of how much vessel we are. Many a time the things that we were supposed to have action over. The things that we're supposed to deal with in the spirit. We failed to deal with. Because we thought we're only vessels. Exodus chapter 14 verses 10. You remember when the children of Israel were being chased after by Pharaoh and his camp. 
And the children of Israel are in wailings. They are weeping. They are scared to death because they know they are in trouble. The 10th verse says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Were there no graves in Egypt? Why did you bring us this far to die? And the next verse says, is this not the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it has been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And the Bible says, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, he said, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you've seen today, you shall see them no more forever. And the Bible says, and the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Bible says, the Lord comes to Moses. The Lord said to Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Why are you crying? He's asking. Why are you crying? And he says, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. And the next verse says, but lift up thy rod. This is God speaking to who? Hey, to Moses. He told him, lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. God didn't say, stretch out forth your thing, I will divide it. No, he told him, whoa, he told him, go to that thing. Go in front of it, stretch forth your rod and your hand over the sea and you divide it. There was an inherent force of command in the spirit of Moses for the sea to obey. That's more than a vessel. There is a man who stretches and waits for God to what? They are that degree of obedience. You stretch, God will separate. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Woo! No, no, no. Behold, I give you power. He says the spirit you have received is not a spirit of fear. Uh -uh. He has given you a spirit of power, sound mind, and love. Woo! Somebody shout glory. This was what was in the mind of God. God was expecting that when Moses gets to that sea, he, he divides it. Moses thought he has to wait on God to tell him what to do. Because it's just a vessel. What should I do? I stretch. Okay. T.L. Osborne said it. We don't pray for power from on high. Ah, we pray for power out of us. We don't call fire from on high. Ah, we release fire out of us. That's what the man meant. He said you're more than a man. Slap someone and tell him you're more. There's a humble believer stretching forth their road, waiting for God to separate it. There's a man and a woman on this ground. Who knows? Somebody shout hallelujah. Say, I love the gospel. John 14, 12. He said, verily, verily. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, he says, the works that I do, he said, he didn't say, I will continue to do through him. Ah, he says, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to the Father. How, how deep that is. You're supposed to fix your business. You're waiting on God to fix it. You're supposed to fix your children. You're waiting on God to fix them. You're supposed to fix your marriage. You're waiting for God to fix it. You're supposed to fix your, your career. You're waiting for God to fix it. You're supposed to fix your education. You're waiting for God to divide it. Wait. God come through me and just do this. No. 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 God has honored you because of the spirit that is in you. He says, for there is a spirit in man. Somebody shout hallelujah. The inspiration is of the Lord. God inspires. Are you hearing me? But he doesn't act. 
God inspires the spirit of that man, but he doesn't act. He leaves that man to make up the decision to say, you know what? I think I'm tired of this thing. Karababa! Sakate! Sokorababa! Who is understanding what I'm saying? He just inspires the man's spirit. He just helps this man understand what is inside him. That is what they call the law of free men. Let me tell you. Let me, let me, let me explain this. The rightness of faith. Huh? When the Bible calls it the righteousness of faith. right? The righteousness of faith. What makes faith righteous? Right? Is that by the time a man gets to a level where he can, God can entrust him with enough power to divide the sea. He knows that the nature of this man is not in the pattern corruptible to use that power for anything else. Because with great power comes great responsibility. Some people are trying to know the mind of God. Some of us know the mind of God. The Bible says he has made known unto us the mystery of his will. Do you know what that means? It means because your mind hasn't yet known, that means that it's not in your spirit. That is why we speak in tongues. Hallelujah. You get in a situation sometimes and you're stuck and you don't know what to do. And then you hold your belly and say, Rapakatala. Because the Bible says, counsel in a, heart, in a man is as deep waters. But only that man with understanding can draw it out. Every answer that you need is inside there. Hallelujah, somebody. But you see, you have to get to a point where you, you, you must have the understanding to draw it out. Is it by mistake? That the man of understanding is the one that draws out that counsel. And he says that there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Lord giveth what? Understanding. He inspires you to understand. Are you hearing me? And what does the understanding do? It helps you draw out. That means God wants to give you understanding to draw it out. He didn't want to draw it out for you. He has no business drawing it. He gave it all to you. It's in there. He says, guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life. Out of you, God, oh, the greater one lives in you. Everything you need is inside there. All you need is the reconciliation of understanding how to draw it out. How to draw it out. He says, there's a spirit in you. But I'm inspiring you. Every instruction I give you as God is to help you to get to the level of understanding. Because once understanding comes, everything is in there. You'll draw it out. You'll draw out your ministry. You'll draw out your, your children. You'll draw out everything. You'll draw out your health. You'll draw out the wisdom. You'll draw out the knowledge. Everything you need is inside there. I just need to give you the understanding of how to get it out. You're not a vessel. You're more than a vessel. Because the greater one lives inside of you. And he that is joined with the spirit is one spirit with the Lord. How can you still think you're just a vessel? Oh, me, I'm just a... Tell your neighbor more than a man. Who is understand what I'm saying? I have been pondering... On what a great responsibility God has placed on the new creature. The believer you and I. And I realize that he has trusted us so much. That he. When you get to a sick man. He expects you to know. How to heal and what to do. You see you must understand. There's a difference. Huh? Let me also make this clear. There's a difference between the things you do. As a man and the things you ask for as a man. Are you hearing me? That's why many people pray and receive not because they pray amiss. Go back to John maybe. I do not plan to go there but let me go there for a second. You remember what I was saying? The verily, verily I say unto you. Right? That he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also. And greater works than he shall he do because I go unto the Father. What does the next verse say? And the next verse say, and whatsoever you, and whatsoever ye ask in my name, that I will do that the Father will be glorified in the, in the Son. 
when he's talking about asking in his name, right? It's different from the works that he's talking about above. Let me explain it. There are things that are no longer in the mind of God for you to ask. I'll give you an example. We know the will of God concerning healing, don't we? The Bible says that he became our own righteousness. He became sin. That through holding those sins, we might become the righteousness of God. And the Bible says, and by his stripes, 1 Peter 2.24, he says, ye were healed. Is that true? When the Bible says, by his stripes, ye were healed. You cannot ask God in Jesus' name to heal you. He will not heal you. Because he doesn't see you sick. Spirit conscious. Who is understand what I'm saying? You cannot ask for healing. Who is understanding what I'm saying? When you go to God and tell him, I ask that you give me money. He doesn't know how to answer you. If you get an answer, it is because he's dealing with your ignorance. But many a time, some of you don't get results because you don't know how to pray. We know the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For though he was what? Rich. But he, for your sex, became poor. That through his poverty, you might be rich. He knows that you're a rich man. When you come to him, and then you tell him, Father, I ask for money. He doesn't understand you. Because like, but I gave you. Oh, I'm tired of poverty. Please make me rich. He didn't understand you. Because he became poor. That you might become what? Rich. There are things a Christian, there are things that are so finished by God that you can never ask for them. You can only do them. Who is understanding what I'm saying? You can only do them. Sickness, you can only heal the sick. Oh, Father, please come from up there. Heal Sister Olivia. Fire. No, you're wasting time. Look at how the Son of God healed the sick. He goes to a dead girl called. He says, Talitha Kumai. Who is understanding what I'm saying? He goes to a blind man. Boom. The eyes are open. He didn't spend 20 hours praying for the sick. Because he's doing the works of God. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. So and see people see you driving a nice car. Oh my God. He said, no, these are the works. They're the works. Vanities, they're the works. Yes. Are you hearing me? You heal the sick. What were you supposed to do? Not heal them? Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. You have to get to a level of understanding that many times we are disconnected from the life. Look, look at the... In Luke 17, verse 6, he said, And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, listen, ye might say, And to this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, And be thou planted in the sea, And it should obey you. It should obey you. Look at how the things of this world look at you. The literal word of obeying, eh? you read the Greek, it is more like one who responds as a servant to his master. Who is understanding what I'm saying? They are there seated there, but they are looking at you as their boss. How can they say we tree hit a Christian? <laughs> And the Christian died. <laughs> How can you be killed by a slave? Do you understand? Refuse it in Jesus name. Do you understand what I'm saying? Look at how God looks at it. He did not say. You will rebuke and tell the. No you will tell the truth. Be thou what? Plucked out by the root. 
right? And be planted in the sea. He did not say, and I will do it. Who is understand what I'm saying? He did not say, when you speak to the tree and tell it be plucked out from the root and go in the sea, I, God, will carry that tree and take it. Go, Joga. No. It is the responsibility of the tree that it should obey you. What does that mean? There is power in you. There is power in you that can make a tree find its way to the sea. Yet it's a static thing. It is so rendered to you. It is so submitted to you that it would find its way by the same power that your tongue spoke. Oh, oh, come on, talk to your finances now. Talk to your body now. And he said, it should obey. He didn't say it will obey. That's giving it a choice. He said it should obey. That means it does not have a choice. I feel God is creating faith in somebody. Receive it! And he said, and they should obey you. Many years ago, I was from an overnight in Mukono somewhere. There used to be a tree and somebody told me somebody used to do witchcraft there. And sometimes in the night, there was a man who used to come and stand on that tree the whole night. He just used to stand on that tree the whole night. He used to stand on that tree the whole night. And then one of those times I was talking to the locals and then they told me, no, actually this tree, there's some witchcraft surrounding this thing. So one of those days, I wish to meditate a lot on this thing. And I remember one of those days I came from, from, an, from, from, from prayer. And, and, and I remember passing that tree. And my spirit told me, cast this thing if it's of witchcraft. I went to that tree and I told it, I cast you in Jesus' name. A fresh tree. The next day they called me and told me the tree fell. You need to understand what I'm talking about. It fell. I said to say, if... Woo! A fresh tree from the roots without any root fell literally. That thing stayed on my heart. From that day, I have never doubted the power that I have in God. The life that I have in God. But you see, by the time you do that, you have the wisdom not to do it simply for luxury. It must have purpose to it. You don't just uproot trees. All of you trees in Kampala. Go to Lake Victoria. For what? Because God is not a show off. God is a purpose God. Tell your neighbor God is a purpose God. It happened. I saw it. Things that don't have life. They understand you. Apostle Emma is my witness. One time we went to preach somewhere. I think I've shared this story once or twice. And I remember we reached a gate, a very old gate. You know those old gates which they have to lift to open? Apostle Emma was in the same car with Morris. So we reached the gate like this, and I said, Father, I wish this thing is opened. The gate, Apostle Emma, you stand up. They might think, you remember? Because he was in the car. The gate opened itself. We looked at each other. We drove in. What happened when we drove in? It closed. Oh, greater is he which is in you than he that is in the world. May natural things obey you. May unnatural things obey you. May the things of the sky obey you. May the things underground obey you. May God be called out and let it appear in Jesus' name. I have the life which is of God. This is not God saying, you commanded the tree. Let me move it. This is you saying. And all the power necessary, including his angels, has to fulfill your word. Matthew 17, 
verses 20. He says it's again, he tells them, same thing because of your unbelief. If your faith is of small as of, of a grain of mustard seed, he said, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. There's, ooh, there's something in the mountain that tells it, she has spoken, let me move. You're more than a vessel. That's what I'm trying to say. You're more than a vessel. Vessels don't do that. Vessels don't do that. Vessels don't do that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. But some of you, just speak and wait for God. And God is like, but I did that already. This should be in the things you do. This should be in the stuff you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Asking in my name is not asking. It's not begging. No. Asking in my name is to claim what is already existing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. When I understood this, I learned to speak to chairs every Thursday. I learned to speak to equipment and cameras. I learned to speak to live stream. I learned, woo, I learned to speak to your cars. I learned to speak to... I just learned to speak to it with the mind that I'm a son of God. I have the life of God. It will work. It must work. There is no way it cannot work. Divide the sea. Tell your neighbor, divide the sea. I'll say one last thing before I finish. That was when I realized that God does not want to babysit you. That's what they call the mature sons, the heels. He says, for as many as are led by the Spirit, so are they what? The sons of God. But the mature ones. A mature-led person is different from a, someone who is being babysitted. Some of you think God... Okay, let me explain it this way. Go back to Moses' context. When he's dealing with Moses and he tells him, why are you guys cry? Why don't you separate the water? Simple science, simple biology, simple English. Eh? I expected you to separate the water. We are not supposed to be here doing this. Moses. We are not even supposed to be talking about, woo we God help. No, I, I expected you to know this. Moses. Just divide the thing. Who are you crying for? Move. Look, go forward. What's up? To just divide the thing. Just Moses. Moses. Just divide the water. What's up? He doesn't see any nature of impossibility to the man he has given his call. Are you hearing me? You have financial issues. Fix them. Why did you cry? What more? Your finances are funny. Fix them. That's what they call true leading. Leading is the command, fix them. If you fix them. That, that's how God leads us. You fix it. I expect you to fix it. Separate this. Just fix it. Are you hearing me? But not just go there and then you start crying. And then Jesus comes and cries with you. Say, hey, you're crying, Joseph, let's cry. Oh, you understand? No, no, no. That's not how my God thinks. That's not how my God thinks. Thank God for this life that we have in Christ. I say, thank God for this life that we have in Christ. But then I realized we were not conscious of that life. We were not conscious of that life. That is why I have made it my mandate. All my life in my person, personal devotion and prayer. That I'm always conscious of that one thing. That the life of God is in me. I cannot pray and not make that statement. 
Whenever anything comes through, it doesn't matter how scared my body is. Inside there, I find my spirit saying, I have the life of God in me. I just, I just remember, there are things that can come and hit you. And for a moment, you, you become calm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they've hit you unexpectedly. But even when they hit us, Kano, don't be confused about what you see outside. Inside there, I'm very, very, very strong. Are you hearing me? And consequently, you start to realize that what's inside starts to come out. What is inside you starts to come out of you. Like one man said, if the light outside shines brighter than the light within, you will die easily and quickly. But if the light within shines brighter than the light outside, you're safe. You have to have more insight than men can see outside all the time. Otherwise, you'll draw your life and strength from what's without. Public opinion. We like you. So if they don't like you, if things are not working in your favor, if circumstances go against you, you hear Christians saying, I want to kill myself. How can you kill yourself? Because of what's outside. And if you're here and you've had such thoughts, I'm not going to babysit you. Fix yourself. We're sorting. Fix yourself. How can you die with the life of God in you? How can you draw back with the life of God in you? How can you give up with the life of God in you? How? It doesn't think, mean that things won't come. Uh-uh. They will come, but they'll find somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. The devil must know you. The devil must know you. The devil, even when he starts a war, he must know that you'll take every measure to put him in his place. Paul we know. Apostle Grace we know. But who are you? Hallelujah, who are you? I have the life of God which is in me. And then out of there, I feel my spirit telling me I don't fail. And I say it, hallelujah. I say it, I say it. I cannot be sick. I don't fall sick. I say it. I cannot be poor. I don't become poor. The communication of your faith becomes effectual. He says, you shall speak. You shall speak. You shall speak. And it should obey. It should obey. I gave it to you. I gave you the power. I said to realize. Sometimes we sow too much to the flesh. We become so conscious of our inabilities as men. Oh, I can't do this because I don't have this. I can't go here because I don't have that. I can't do this because I can't that. I cannot do this because I cannot do that. I, you know, I would have done this, but I can't do this. You're sowing to the flesh. And consequently, corruption will hit you. I can do all things. Through Christ which strengthens me. Because the same life that raised the same spirit that raised him from the dead the same spirit if he could not leave Jesus there he can't leave me there I know that I have the life of God that's the first thing you do when something comes up always go in that mirror where nobody's watching and say but darling you're more than a woman you're more than a man you're more than a man. You're more than what they see. You I wish Somebody receive it. Can no men do 
don't do certain things. No. No. I know what is inside me. Tell yourself I know what is inside me. I know who is inside me. I know what is working inside me. It is that treasure. That treasure. Listen, I will say this until it sinks. We are not going to fail in this world. I don't care what is not working in your family. You will not fail. I don't care what is not working in your marriage. I don't care what is not working with your children. I don't care what is not working with your career. And I don't even care how many mistakes you've made. You might have made a mistake, but you are not a mistake. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Things should turn around. Hey, did you hear what I just said? Things should turn around. Things should turn around. Tell your neighbor, things should turn around for you. Things should turn around for you. I don't care what's in your blood. I don't care what's in your body. I don't care what your age is. I don't care which job you have. I don't care which networks you carry. Things should turn for you. Because you have the life which is of God. Ay, 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 ay. We are going to build castles in the sky. My goodness, my goodness. They are going to fly all the way from the whole world with their jets and packing them at Entebbe just to come for prayers. You don't understand what I'm saying. You're going to stand before kings and not before mid men. Presidents will call you to inquire from you. They will look for you. Government should change for you. Economy should change for you. Politics should change for you. Social systems should change for you. The hearts of men should change for you. Listen. There was a time in this nation it was impossible for people this number to gather together to pray in a weekly service. But somebody had to believe. Somebody had to believe that it was possible. And with what I see, we have not by August some people will understand that we did not come to play. We didn't come for games. We did not come in the gospel to play around ping pong. We came to preach Jesus and him crucified. We came to heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead and bring the kingdom of God. Uganda will change because of the gospel. We are not preaching for Mere Yarero. We are not preaching for, for just the meal of ah. We have foregone meals for the gospel. Tell your neighbor I believe. You must write history. Let me tell you, history will judge us so kindly. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm not just proclaiming words. No, I'm prophesying in somebody's life. History will judge you kindly. You see, we are many here, but I'm talking to individuals. They will say this woman was in Uganda. Are you sure she was a Ugandan? Yes. Are you sure that man was a Ugandan? Yes. Are you sure he drank the water of Uganda? Yes. Are you sure that man used to walk the streets of Kampala Road? Yes. Are you sure there was a time he did not even have pocket money and transport in his pocket? Are you sure? And we shall tell him yes. Give me volume. I feel I'm shouting. I, and we'll tell him yes. He says, brethren, concerning our calling, not many of you are noble. 
You are not the best. You are not the most beautiful. You are not the most handsome. You are not the, the best person. You didn't have the best manners. But he chose you. And he put his life in you. Somebody said hallelujah. He placed his spirit in your body. You will not die an average woman. You will not die an average man. To the glory of God. Divide the sea. That means that it's more than just the power to perform. He's given you the mind to perform. He's given you the understanding. Vessels don't carry understanding. You're more than a channel. You carry the understanding of what God is up to. We have the mind of God. That means every time you're somewhere, you know what you're supposed to be doing. God knows what you're supposed to be doing. You and God know what both of you are supposed to be doing. You don't need to ask God, shall I? No! When the man separated water, the Lord gave me a vision. He meant, if you ever get in a place and you're being chased and you say a wall and you go into a wall, only know he means divide it. There's somebody who reached the wall and he said, I think God wasn't on my side. There's somebody who reached the wall and said, I think God is judging me. There's somebody who reached the wall and said, I think I did not hear God. There's somebody who reached the wall and said, I think we are dead. There's somebody who reached that wall and judged themselves and said, I think God put this wall to tell me that I messed up in 1976. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. When you get to the wall, he's only telling you. Go through it. Why? Because I will do you good all the days of your life. He said he shall never see his righteous. See corruption. Neither their souls wrought in hell. He will never let it happen to you. Who am I talking to? You were doing things and then you got to a point where a wall appeared, a sea appeared, situations came and they held you straight and then you started judging yourself. You said, no, I think God is telling me that I don't need to move beyond this. I think the spirit of God is telling me that I think I don't, no, 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 darling. No, no, no. You're so into the flesh. God does not deal with you according to your flesh. He deals with you according to your spirit. Divide the sea. Get faith and say I'm dividing it. Soon I'm going to teach about righteousness in another level. Because some of you need to understand that this righteousness we have, one, is not a license to sin. That's foolish for even people to assume we say that. But more than that, some of you will understand that this righteousness we have received is to appropriate the life of God. That's what Romans says. We have obtained the righteousness of God that the life of God will freely. I think I'll share it next Thursday. We have obtained the life of God that the righteousness of God that the life of God would flow through us uninterrupted. Why? Because you're not righteous by what you did. You're righteous by what God has done in you. Stop thinking that you're stuck because God is mad with you. No. You're stuck because you don't understand faith. Believe God. Okay, I'll ask you, common sense. The children of Israel who crossed the sea, were all of them right? Even the mixed multitudes crossed in that sea and the miracle happened to them. Separate that. There are evil men who have learned to prolong their days and there are righteous men who die quickly because they don't understand how God loves you. God loves you. The reason why you, 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 you make up your mind to live a godly character 
it is for the two reasons. One, that you don't ashamed the one who called you. But two, that you do not stumble those you are who look up to you. That's important. Come on, speak another tongue that we get out of here. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to just take a minute. Look at whatever is before you. Whatever you thought was a reason why. Right now in the name of Jesus. Don't wait for God to divide. Divide. Yeah. Behold, I show you a mystery. The word of God is a double-edged sword. It divides the soul and the spirit. It separates the soul and the spirit. It exposes our hearts and thoughts for what they really are. Because you have the word of God, you have the power to dividing a son of the soul and the spirit. Now divide whatever is in front of you. Go through in the name of Jesus. Come on, talk to God. Come on, talk to God. Come on, talk to God. Speak to your finances. Speak to your health. Tell your body, get to order. Speak to your character. Tell it be aligned to the will of God. Come on, speak. It is working in your life. Put up your hands. I will say a few words in your spirit. The life of God is in you. Say amen. Everything you do will prosper. The things you command should obey you. You're blessed in your dealings. You're blessed in your vision. You're blessed in your service toward God. You're blessed in your finances. You're blessed in your career. You're blessed in your family. You're blessed in the things you dream. You're blessed in the things ahead of you. You divide everything that gets in front of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, they should obey you. I say they should obey you. I say they should obey you. I say they should obey you. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. If you're here and there's sickness in your body, I speak to that sickness to heal. I command that cyst, that swelling, that growth, that virus, that bacteria. I kill it and it should obey me in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is well with you. Slap somebody in your left on the right and tell him, brother, sister, things are working for you. Chimugambi. Mugambi, be okay. Rest. Trust God. Tell him trust God. 
things will pass. These things will pass. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.